Hey there, it's Swiftkey, and welcome back to The Last Door, a spooky game that I am playing for Spooky Month. And yeah, so we are in the manor of Anthony Beachmore, who was a friend of ours, and we're kind of worried about him. He sent us a weird letter, and weird things are going on. Oh, the, the ravens are gone. Why are the ravens gone? Okay, this room was full of ravens last episode. Fireplace, it looks like it's not been cleaned. The curtains are drawn. Can I open them? Okay. Um, Counter with glasses and some liquor bottles. I, I would better leave it alone. You don't think. You don't say. A dare head over the looks of the room. Yeah, okay. We've already been through most of that. Okay, so the, the crows are now gone. Um, are they back outside? Maybe they saw what I did to their murdered brethren, and they're like, we, won't, we want nothing to do with you, sir. Alright, I probably need, like, a paintbrush or something. I don't know where I would get one. Oh, what am I taking from over here? Oh, it's a cloth. Oh, that's perfect, because that will go with that, right? I dampened the cloth with paint thinner. Perfect. So now I can go do that paint thing, because there was that painting upstairs. All right, let's go do that. I, I know like the graphics in this game aren't particularly advanced, but it's still got this really great atmosphere. It's very oppressive. Like I'm just, I'm waiting for something to happen to spook the crap out of me. I really don't know what was going on with my friend Anthony. He seems to have been like possessed or something. All right, let's use that on that. The thinner has worked. The fresh paint is gone, and now I can see the original painting. The lynx's mouth is open, as if it were growling. Interesting. Raven perched outside the window, tapping on the glass with its beak. Okay, so I guess maybe the golden key for the attic latch, is, or the attic trapdoor, is in the lynx's mouth? Let's go find out. Oh, I love puzzle games like this. Love figuring out how everything connects with everything else. Uh, was that down this way? I can't even remember. I think it was. No, it wasn't. That's the cat room. Yeah. And that's the wine cellar. Was it upstairs? It must have been upstairs. See, I told you I'd get lost in this game. All right, let's go up the stairs. And that's the stuck door. Can I use the knife on it? Can I force the lock with a knife? Okay, fine. Fine, Mr. Picky Pants. Yeah, it's the the store here. Yeah. All right, let's go look at the Lynx. The Lynx looks like the one in Anthony's portrait. Its mouth is shut, like it was before I revealed the original painting. Perfect. Just cut its mouth open. God. Well, I guess pried open, but still. I managed to get the Lynx's mouth open. There's a golden key inside. Perfect. Oh no, I bet his body is up here. Oh yeah. Oh god, no! Anthony, no! Oh yeah. Saw that coming. The lifeless body of my dear friend. What madness, what madness could have led him to commit such an act? There's something in his pocket. It's a sealed letter. Dear J. Di Divot? Divot, I guess? If you are reading these lines, then I am nothing but a dead body hanging before you. I write to you my last shreds of lucidity. You are one of my oldest friends, and when I sent you the letter asking you to come here, I did not doubt for one moment that you would. Had you failed me this evening, everything would have been lost. I found myself involved in a series of horrible incidents. For reasons beyond my comprehension and sanity, I have become a total stranger to myself and to my closest relatives capable of the most indescribable and atrocious acts. 
I cannot give you any more details at this time. I must ask you to go immediately back to the boarding school where we made that pact, where we all swore in our honor that sentence that will protect us. This letter must not reach anyone else, so it is imperative that you destroy it immediately. The lives of the rest of the group, and yours too, are in great danger. Do not delay, they are already waiting for you. Seeing is believing, Divot. Do not forget that. Always your loyal friend, Anthony Beechworth. <laughs> ah! God, really? With the ravens? Oh my god. Okay! Well, that happened. Oh my gosh. The adventure continues in episode two. Okay, so let's end episode one. The last door of the letter was funded via Kickstarter by 285 backers. It was published on March 11th, 2013. Okay, so that's the end of the first episode. So the episodes are relatively short. All right, let's go to episode two. I don't know why episode previously on the last door. Oh, this reminds me of Life is Strange, the different episodes. It's not a bad thing. Jeremiah Divot receives a mysterious letter from his childhood friend, Anthony Beechworth. He travels to his friend's manor in Sussex, where he learns of Anthony's descent into madness and the death of his wife, Anna Beechworth. Devitt faces the perils of the house and finally finds the dead body of his friend who committed suicide. Anthony's final letter warns Divot of an unknown danger and asks him to remember his past by going back to the boarding school they both attended years back. Okay. Father in heaven, hallowed be, be your name. Okay. Oh. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread. What is happening? What did you pick up off the table? Oh, are you one of those crazy religious fanatics that like flays themselves with whips? What are they called? I can't remember what they're called. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive our debtors. Yep, yep, you are. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Amen. Oh my god. Okay, we gotta see the credits again, apparently. Oh, I can skip it, okay. We saw those last time. I do like showing the credits for games, but we saw those in the last episode. Now tell me, where are you? What do you see? Uh hear a whole lot of scared breathing and I'm in a very dark forest okay oh my god the breathing is squeegeing me out uh who is it is it Anthony answer me uh good question it just looks like a shadow. Oh, it's it's nobody. Okay. No easy answers. Okay. Oh. Um. What is she doing? Get close to her. Get close to Anna. Yeah. What happened to their child? That's another question. When I count to three, you'll wake up. One. Two. Ah! Three, now, wake up, wake up! God. You can rest now, Mr. DeVitt. DeVitt, DeVitt, what was I calling, DeVitt? That will be enough for today. Are these sessions really necessary? I am confident that this is the best course of treatment for your symptoms. Now, did you ever see him again? I saw it. What did you see? Can you describe it? Uh, I struggled to find adequate words. It looked like an eye. It looked like an eye? It was like an eye, perfectly rounded and dark, deep and empty, accompanied by the most horrifying, pain-filled screams I've ever heard. Inside, a complete darkness, 
where an evil dwells deep, deep below, a forgotten fear for human reasoning, but, undoubtedly, still rests deep down inside our being. In my case, that fear has already awoken. I can understand why you are disturbed, Mr. DeWitt. With our permission, I would like to... With, with your permission, not our permission. I would like to consult on your case with a colleague of mine, a man I've known for many years, who is more versed in modern psychological practices. I think his knowledge and experience would be very helpful in enabling us to understand your condition. If you think it will help, Doctor, I leave it in your hands. The agony grows increasingly unbearable, and if you believe this man can help, then I welcome his aid. Thank you, Dr. Wakefield. I bid you good evening. Anthony, my friend, what really happened to you? How could you have let your wife Anna die so awfully? These doubts consume my soul. I hardly remember the time we spent together as schoolmates. I confess that beyond your enduring friendship, I can recall little of those years. Were your words a result of an increasing loss of sanity? In your letter, you wrote that someone awaits me. A warning to ward me from a genuine danger, or merely the ravings of a brilliant mind addled by insanity. Something stirs uneasily within my heart. I will not rest easily again until I go back to that boarding school and find out what secrets may lie within. Farewell, Mr. and Mrs. Beechworth. Rest now in peace. Oh, well, guess I'm going to the boarding school. I'm sure this won't go horribly wrong. Alright. Another spooky place for me to explore. Episode 2, Memories. Alright. Get back into it. An old, quite damaged mailbox. Anything interesting inside? There's a postcard inside the mailbox. Dear Matthew, it has been several months, and still I have heard no news from you. My brothers insist that you have abandoned me, but I am sure you remain true. I know that you would never do that to me, for I know your heart and the honesty of your eyes. I got this address from a hospital in London. I pray that it reaches you safely. If that is the case, I want you to know that I will be always waiting for you. Forever yours, Juliet Holloway. There's nothing else inside. All right, um... Go inside the gate, then, please. Okay. Um, I would like to go inside now. Can I not? What the frick am I supposed to do? I will save the postcard. It has been here for more than a week and it doesn't seem that anybody's going to pick it up. Yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to get, you know, inside the gate, but for some reason it won't let me. Am I supposed to go this way? Oh! <laughs> I'm a smart person. The Angel Gabriel, the school's emblem. I remember it being very pristine, but it looks neglected and dirty now. Stone Eagle lies on the floor. It appears to have broken off of the fountain. Alright, in we go. Oh, I can. Oh, hi. I assume this place would be abandoned, but clearly it is not. Is there anything over here I should concern myself with? Uh, what? <laughs> That's a coffin, and the sound of somebody digging. A locked wood coffin, badly finished. It seems that whoever made it was a bit rushed to finish. Okay, is there a creepy grave digger? Yeah, there sure is. Good evening. I hope you are right, and this turns out to be indeed a good evening. My name is Devitt. I did not know that there was a graveyard here. My pleasure, Mr. Divot. I am Frank Baldwin. I need to figure out me. Like, I feel like he should have a Cockney accent. I don't know why. <laughs> Do not ask me why, but one sure is specifically ordered to bury the corpses here. Uh, why? Do not understand. I should let you get back to work. Why? Did he order to 
bury corpses here. Why? I do not understand. I can't do a Cockney accent, so I apologize. What is there to understand, Mr. Divot? God has forgotten or for, forsaken this place. Ah, oh, don't you know? Here we take care of patients. I'm an old alumnus. I used to attend the school. I'm an old alumnus. I used to attend the school. It has been a long time since this is not a boarding school anymore. The building is now used as a nursing home run by nuns. A former student, eh? I never heard anybody in the village speak fondly of the school. They say it closed overnight, though nobody knows why. Not a lot was known about it. Excuse the interruption, Mr. Baldwin. I'll leave you to your work. Have a nice evening, alumnus of it. Uh, okay. The small group of graves has been haphazardly arranged. A grave recently dug. Okay. Um, why are you burying people here? Yeah. This door's locked from the inside. You don't say. You're trying to sneak in the back there. So sneaky. Alright, let's go in the front and be a reasonable person. Pardon. Excuse me, sister. Good evening, sister. Good evening. I'm Mother Elizabeth. What brings you here, Mr... DeWitt? I'm a former student of this boarding school. As you see, Mr. DeWitt, this stopped being an academic institution a long time ago, and is now exclusively dedicated to prayer and the well-being of the patients under our care. I see. Even so, may I please speak to... Mr. DeWitt, I'm afraid that we are too busy to start wasting time talking about past issues. In addition, there is little to say. We sisters arrived after the boarding school had closed down. Everybody but Monsignor, of course. Monsignor? Exactly. But don't you but you didn't answer my question. Why have you come to this place, Mr. DeWitt? Uh, it'd be good for me to appreciate the passage of time. This place will help me remember. I prefer not to talk about it. Uh this place will help me remember. This place will help me remember my past. If you have memory problems, I would recommend you to visit a doctor immediately and don't waste your time here. Uh, it'd be good for me to appreciate the passage of time. I guess that it would be a good idea to visit this place again and perceive the passage of time. Perceive the passage of time? What are you talking about? To be honest, I prefer not to talk about it. I couldn't tell you why this place is so important to me, but it is a lot. Well, I appreciate your honesty, Mr. DeWitt. I'll allow you to stay around here. I hope I won't regret my decision. Don't worry, Mother. Thank you. Uh, oh, okay. We're taking off our coat and staying for a while. Okay. Um, I'm guessing that's the church, chapel area. Mr. DeWitt, these rooms are private. All right, fine. Can I talk to you again? Uh, did you take care of patients here? Did Monsignor I already live here? Talk to Monsignor, Mr. Baldwin. Did you say you cared for patients? Of course, Mr. DeWitt. We tend to both the physical and spiritual needs of those in our care. Did you say that Monsignor already lived here when this venue still was a boarding school? Indeed. He still was priest and professor before he became Monsignor and started to lead this place. Uh, who is Mr. Baldwin? Monsignor instructed me to take him on as a t caretaker. Many of the sisters find him a bit strange, but he performs his work well and complains little. Uh, Mother Elizabeth, Mr. Baldwin told me that lately a lot of patients are dying. What is happening? Sadly, the Lord is taking many of these unfortunate souls. Uh, could I talk to the Monsignor? I'm afraid that's impossible. Monsignor has left strict instructions that he's not to be disturbed, not even by any of the sisters. Uh, thank you, Mother. I'll leave you to your duties. All right. Let's go this way, I guess. Oh, dear. Where are you? Where are you? Some bandages and other medical equipment. Nothing of interest. Picture of St. Camillus de Lely, patron saint of the sick, hospitals, and nurses. He seems to have forsaken this place. Among the baggages, I can see a packet of letters bound by twine. 
I'd ask you not to touch my belongings, please. You're not aware who you are talking to. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Doctor. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not a doctor. Pay him no mind. He's been delirious for some days. I'm Miss Mary Ving, and this is my brother, Matthew. Julia, <coughs> why have you left me? Why you don't answer my letters? <coughs> my letters. You see, the poor man is still obsessed with his fiancée. He won't accept that she left him months ago. My poor Matthew. I'm very sorry, Miss Vin. I'm going to say Vin. I hope he recovers. Thank you. Can, can I dig through your bag now? I would ask you not to touch my stuff, please. Juliet. Oh. Where are you? Time goes very slowly in this place, as if it is stopped. Please let us rest. Okay. Photographs of people, most likely family and friends of this bed's previous resident. Bunch of medical reports. In a magazine entitled Weird Tales. Are you all right, madam? There was a rhythmic sound, like a breathing. What do you mean? It was last night. I felt an increasing pressure on my temples. Something dry and rough, like tree bark, brushed against my leg. And I saw something on the wall, like a growing shadow. I lit the lamp, but there was nothing. I, I'm sure it was just a nightmare. Madam? The poor woman has fallen into an easy, an easy fitful sleep. This must be a tuberculosis hospital. He is quite a pale young boy. He is asleep. Oh, hello. Please help. Please, someone. Pity. I am sorry, you cannot be here. Is there some way I can help? Don't worry about it, sir. The Lord looks after each and every one of our patients. He will provide you with all the help you need. If you wish, you can pray there next to the statue of Our Lady. Don't you think she is beautiful? The Virgin listens to those in need. Well, there are several crucifixes all together at the headboard of this bed. Why? Hmm. Okay. Gloomy statue of the Virgin Mary makes this place even more mournful, if that's possible. Picture of the Virgin Mary gazing at you, supposedly to portray sympathy and compassion for you. However, she seems to look more pained and sorrowful here. Oh, this door's open. Oh, is it the church or school room? I remember that we used to keep here some textbooks. Now there is a music box. I shall take it for reasons unknown. Yeah, this is a this is a classroom. Dear brother, I have received your letter and I'll try to write to you more frequently. I hope you are studying a lot and you feel comfortable there. We miss you a lot. When are you coming back? Father is in bed with fever and I do not feel very well, but I am on medication. <coughs> oh, apologies. Today is my birthday and I'm feeling blue. It is a quiet and boring Sunday at the village. Mom is going to cook a lemon cake like those grandma used to make. I wish we could eat it together. Right back soon. I'm looking forward to knowing how you are doing and what you're learning. How is Scotland and so on. A big hug. I think about you a lot. Your dear sister. Okay. January 15th, 1876. Father Ernest seemed unusually troubled today. Several times he paused abruptly in the middle of a lecture for no reason, even during his favorite class, theology. January 18th. Today, Father Ernest was very irritable. Collins made a comment and was expelled from class for it, and even DeVitt was admonished just for reading a philosophy book. I hope Father Ernest doesn't turn his ire towards me. My father will be disappointed if I fail to get good marks. Okay, so this is from when I went here. It was very disconcerting to see Father Ernest entering class so pale and sweaty. In the middle of his lecture, he stumbled, dazed, and had to sit. Father Eugene taught our theology class today, even though he doesn't know the subject matter as well as Father Ernest. 
When he asked him what had happened to Father Ernest, Father Eugene told us that he had taken ill. What worries me is that now Father Eugene is also starting to look unwell. It has been a month since we last saw Father Ernest. We are told that he is still sick, but if he is so ill, then why hasn't a physician come to treat him? My studies are flagging, but I have taken it upon myself to read on my own. I hope this helps, as I must succeed in spite of the problems happening around us. It was announced this morning that the school is to close. None of us know why, and we cannot get a straight answer from the faculty. They each dodge the question, and I am starting to think they may not know the answer themselves. Their anxiety is palpable, though they try to hide it behind a calm face. But what about Father Ernest? I care he alone is to remain after we vacate the premises. There's a picture in the diary. Why is that person scratched out? There's a photograph of my graduating class. I see myself, Father Ernest, and Anthony. I do not know the names. Of, I do not remember the names of the others. One face has been completely scratched out. Okay, that just goes through it again. <sighs> Interesting. Books on these shelves are old and musty. Theology is the dominant subject. There's an odd sentence written on the board. In death, there is hope. In death, there is life. One must seek its true nature to understand the nothing. It looks like it has been there for years as the chalk has faded in some places. The nothing? What is this, a never-ending story? Okay. I wonder whose voice got, or whose face got scratched out. Can I go up here? I unlock the door. Because I'm awesome like that. Okay. Uh, who is the Monsignor, Mr. Baldwin? I cannot rightly say. After all these years, I've never seen the man. Who knows? Maybe he does not exist. But Mother Elizabeth told me the Monsignor specifically requested your hiring by letter. I'm flattered by my... I'm changing his accent so much. Oh my god. I'm flattered my reputation precedes me, but I still cannot tell you anything else about the man. Alright. Uh, guess I'll try to go up the stairs in the entranceway? Piety. I don't know if she'll let me go up though, because I'm assuming that's where the Monsignor is. Oh, she will, okay. That's a thing. In the dusty old tapestry of the Virgin Mary with baby Jesus in her arms. Oh, hi. A syringe next to a flask with a label that reads morphine. Oh dear. Good evening, sister. Dot, dot, dot. Sister? All this suffering, all these tears, all our prayers unanswered. What? What do you mean, sister? All these years entrusted to the Lord, praying, looking for a sign, for something that can give me strength. Every day I hear them cry, pray, scream, and die, and what for? Where are you, Lord? Why don't you answer me? Uh, Lord works in mysterious ways, or maybe there is no Lord. Hmm. Second one's just depressing, and I don't want to depress the crap out of her, because, you know, she's dedicated her life to God, so... kind of don't want to turn around and be like, well, maybe he doesn't exist. So I'll say he works in mysterious ways. The Lord works in mysterious ways, sister. Certainly, yes, but I don't ask for much, just something to go on, a path to follow. I can't go on, not like this. Excuse me, sir. Oh dear. On the upper shelf of the antique cupboard, a well-worn Bible and rosary beads gather dust. One of the humble beds where the nuns sleep. An old mirror that hardly reflects. Through the big open window, dust cold air freezes the room. Is she gonna jump? And worn out and faded tapestry of Jesus Christ. Why is this tapestry on the floor? 
another tapestry, though I remember from my school days the student dormitory was here. Can I move it? I'm guessing the door's still behind it. Okay. Uh, oh, is this like a shower? Broken mirror, there's a protruding piece. I will take it for reasons unknown. An old rusty play pipe communicates with other areas in the house. There's a puddle in the shower hole with something shining under the grating. I cannot see it properly. Uh, can you use the mirror? No. Okay, fine. The shower is old, rusty, and poorly maintained. Just a couple of old towels. Okay, so I think I'm gonna end this part here. This game, man, it's getting to me. Like, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Let me know what you guys think. Are you enjoying it too? I hope you are. Um, like I said, I want to play spooky games for October, so this is my first choice, and I'm really enjoying it. It's very oppressive, and I'm very intrigued by the story, because clearly there's something going on related to this guy and his friends from their school days. They made a pact or something with what, who knows, but I'm interested to see where this game goes. So if you guys are enjoying it too, please press the like and subscribe buttons. I really do appreciate all of your support, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.